NZ and it was fantastic. The weather there is much better than this Australian weather. I don't like Australian weather. To me, it's a MILF. Australian weather is a MILF because it's 42 and fucking hot. <laughs> I prefer 18 and wet any day. 18 degrees, you suppose. Um, Anyway, so New Zealand was really good, great weather, great scenery, great people for the most part. There was one oddball who started talking to us in an alleyway behind a nightclub once. And I don't know why he was sharing all this information with us, but he started saying all these sexual adventures. So he went up to me and he said, Oh gee, I've had sex with sucks chucks just this week. Even this morning I had sex with a minor. <laughs> That's not cool, man, a minor. <laughs> no, she's of age, she just works in the mine. <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay then. Uh, what does her company mine? What does it dig for? Oh, you know, like iron ore. Iron ore, what? What else? <laughs> anyway, I don't know why he was sharing this information with us, but he obviously wanted to boast about it, so I said, all right, fine. Guy, uh, what is the actual numerical number of all the sex that you've been having? So this New Zealander Kiwi guy started to reflect. He was counting all the sex he had in his life. And, and then he fell asleep. <laughs> counting sheep. <laughs> If I waved a pencil up and down and threw it in the air, would the pencil still be stationary? <laughs> I'm, I'm friends with 24 letters of the alphabet. I don't know you, and I don't know why. Uh, I'm a primary school teacher, so I've got dad jokes for days, teacher jokes for days. So, like, math is the subject that counts. <laughs> Velcro is a ripoff. <laughs> I'm, I'm very aware that these uh, puns are terrible. Uh, whiteboards are remarkable. Uh, I got dumped. I uh, got dumped by a wave at the beach. Uh, I, I, got, I um, got dumped. And I know that some amateur stand up comedians come out and they share a sub story about getting broken up with or getting cheated on, and it's not actually true. They do it to elicit an uh, empathetic response from female lady, women, girls in the crowd. Uh, they do it because maybe after they get off the stage, uh, you'll talk to them and maybe get a pity drink and so on and so figure the circle of life. And I think that's manipulative to uh, evoke empathy like that. I, I could never do that because I think it would be disrespectful to the memory of that. I, I once uh, broken up with uh, with a girl <laughs> um, <laughs> with a girl that was uh, very special to me. I had a soft spot for her for years, and by soft spot I mean exactly the opposite. <laughs> uh, story time. I still remember the very first time I met her dad, which coincidentally was also a big relationship moment. The first time I slept over, and the dad, the stickler, he wouldn't let us sleep in the same bedroom together. He wouldn't even let us sleep together, which was a shame, because he was attractive. <laughs> uh, but, but he actually was, he was a gym junkie. Uh, anyway, uh, it was a shame because he was attractive, he was a gym junkie, he had big muscles. And, you know, me and him got on so well, we had so much in common. <laughs> His life philosophy was, you should always be able to drop down and do your, your, the number of your age in push-ups. So a 20 year old should be able to do 20 push-ups, fair enough. I don't know if an 82 year old would be able to be able to do this. <laughs> that was his life philosophy and I didn't want to disagree with him. This guy meant business. I had just met him and he was all, already going full Arnold Schwarzenegger on me. He was going, get down, do the push-ups. <laughs> he wanted me to do my agent push-ups, so I, I did, I got down. One, two, three, getting a bit shaky. Four, five, and done! And he looked at me so disappointed. And I said, I'm born on February 29th, I'm a leap year baby. <laughs> and he kept looking at me disappointed, like I'd just done something so inhumanely wrong, like genocide, or said that Jar Jar Binks was my favorite Star Wars character. <laughs> anyway, he, he ended up liking me, but his daughter doesn't anymore. <laughs> Which I, I don't blame her, because 
I think me as a person, I'm kind of like the Burj Khalifa Tower in Dublin, in uh, Dubai. It's the uh, world's biggest building, and I think we're alike because we both have many floors. <laughs> like, I, I try not to be, but I, I think I have some obsessive uh, and easily addictive uh, tendencies. Like, I did used to be an addict. I was addicted to soap. I'm clean now. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so she doesn't like me like that anymore, which is a shame because I only like her like that, and I don't, I don't like anybody else. Nobody could ever compare. And when I try to talk to somebody else, I just like think of her and go, oh, just get reminded of something like she used to have eyes, she used to have hands, she used to walk in my direction, direction, and now she just walks away. But alas. You know, I'm young, she may not be the one for me. I may like somebody else. I may want somebody else. Like I get to have gangbangs. <laughs> no, I don't really want another girl. It's pretty much since all of this has transpired, I've only really felt a connection with one person, kind of, somewhat of a connection. It was a North African girl, and we just spent hours communicating in a native tongue. We just clicked. Let's have a look at that. I have a joke. I have a joke about uh, YouTube videos, how they just cut off and how annoying it is. Because don't you hate?